Happy Easter. Let us worship. Blessed be you, risen one. You arrive soft-footed in the garden of our lives and surprise us with astonishing news. Hope has sprung, the dead season is gone. Praise to you, holy gardener. What was sown in tears, we reap in joy. With tulip and willow, you break out in newness. With bunting and robin, your happy return is announced.
Please be seated. Let us pray. O living one, we go to look where last we found you, and there is nothing. You have left the tomb, and like all new life, you have run off ahead. Can we leave the old and step out into this new day? Can sensation return to our hands that we might touch the signs of life emerging among us, or to our minds that we might hear you calling us by our true name? This day, O oh risk taker, give us the courage to trust in abundance. Interrupt us and name us again. Amen. We stand to sing. Well, a very warm welcome to all of you who are gathered today. We welcome you if you have made your way here physically or if you are joining us on YouTube live streaming. Um, for those on YouTube uh, streaming, we are uh, celebrating communion today. So if you can find a spot in the service to get yourself the elements, some juice and some bread, you can have communion along with us. Everyone is welcome at this table. If you are um, very small, if this is your first time, if you're not sure what you believe about communion anymore, you are very much welcome at this table. Are there any announcements from the floor? Some of us are finding our voices and it's wonderful. <laughs> There is um, uh, coffee and refreshments after worship, so if you do have time in your Easter Sunday to join us, please do stop for that. Well, Easter and spring are often full of surprises. Have you had any surprises this spring? Snow. <laughs> Well, I had a big surprise last week. I did have a very big surprise. <laughs> I, um, 
I got ready at home, as I always do, and I put on my coat. Put on my coat, probably took my time, did my coat up. Then, when I, put, then I put my boots on, and then I herded the dogs into the car, got my bags and everything into the car. And I was just coming to work. It was 9 o'clock. And um, had my hand on the steering wheel. And a little mouse came out of my coat sleeve. <laughs> right there. You know the mother to baby 12 inch gaze? That's what I had with that little mouse. <clears throat> so I did what any normal 60 year old would do. I completely freaked out. <laughs> I, I didn't run into a tree, which was a miracle. I pulled into a back alley, and I said, what do I do? What do I do? You know, it's me against the mouse. <laughs> and they had gone um, unhelpfully silent. You know, my one dog beats a retreat whenever she smells trouble. The other one usually comes forward, but she did not know what to do either. I had the moment that we have when the impossible is happening, that it was just the felt on the inside of my coat. Like, my mind couldn't take it in. And so I pulled up my sleeve to see if it was really true, and there it was, and just the head because the little monkey had bit through, was resting comfy and cozy inside the lining, and just its little head was poking out, blinking, blinking into the light. <clears throat> Did you see the name of today's service? Sentence fragment. And that's all I'm telling you. <laughs> because today, you are the ones finishing the stories. It's just the way it goes. <laughs> now, I do have something for anyone under the age of 12. No, I th maybe anyone under the age of 13. Just a little Easter something. There's some crafts in here, things I would like to use to make um, Easter crafts with. And um, there's no glue. So, oh, hi, June. Will you take an Easter craft bag home? Thank you. Do you want to take one for your sister? Yeah. Hey, thank you, Wendell. This whole bag is yours, honey. Wendell, you take the whole bag. Do you have some other cousins here? Do you want one, Carson? Do you want some crafts? Take it home and see what you can make with those. You know what I was making with pipe cleaners? No. <laughs> you people have a one-track mind. Move on. <laughs> you can take two pipe cleaners and half a pipe cleaner, twist it around your finger, and you can make a wonderful butterfly ring, and any parent can find that online. Is there anyone else who might want a bag? <clears throat> nobody else, nobody else. Okay, well, you're just going to sit there, and in case you decide you want one, you can have one. <clears throat> Let's have a reading from the gospel. Bill, would you come forward? Our gospel reading this morning 
is taken from Mark 16, verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Our gospel reading, may our ears hear, may our hearts be led to understanding. Thank you, Bill. Let us pray. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts create greater light and love in the world. Amen. Beloved of God, the first half of the sentence is simple. The second half is stunning. Before I die, I want to care about others. Before I die, I want to rob a bank. Before I die, I want to finish painting the, ba the bathroom. <clears throat> These are the anonymous thoughts scrawled on chalkboards across the world. The public art project was started by a New Orleans artist named Candy Chang. In 2012, groping for a way to deal with a profound loss in her own life, Candy got permission to paint the side of a derelict house in her neighborhood with black chalk paint. And she stenciled the sentence fragment onto it dozens of times. Before I die, I want to blank. People responded. They wrote down their hopes, their dreams, and their secrets. The responses were funny. They were sad. They were poignant. Strangers wrote that they wanted to get their wife back, that they wanted to know what love feels like. The wall in New Orleans was taken down after a few months, but the idea caught on, and eventually the project went global. To date, over 5,000 chalkboard walls have been created by communities in 75 countries, including Canada, and each wall is its own testament to living an examined life. There's something to a sentence fragment. Many years ago, a friend of mine quit his day job, took a creative writing course, and began traveling across North America teaching creative writing workshops and making a good living at it, I kid you not. He gathered groups of 12 or 20 people and gave them sentence fragments all evening, and they wrote, and they wrote, and they wrote, and they read to each other, and they were heard. Today's gospel lesson ends in a sentence fragment. 
you wouldn't have noticed it because most translators consider it a mistake and they therefore correct it. But in the earliest versions we have of Mark's gospel, remember, written on a scroll, three women go to Jesus' tomb on Easter Sunday to honor his body by anointing it with a mixture of oil and spices. Like many of Jesus' followers, the women were devout Jews, and therefore they waited till their Sabbath observance was complete before they went and could touch a dead body. When they get to the tomb, it is open, a frightening sight in an age of grave robbers, and inside they see a, a young man. We are told he is alive, he is dressed in white, it's not Jesus, but perhaps an angel who comes with a message. Jesus has gone on ahead to Galilee. And you'd think the women had seen a mouse because they flee in amazement and terror. So that's the fragment. And this is how the oldest manuscripts ended the story. Um, I just wanted you to see, because it's really interesting. The last two let the last three letters of that of the last Greek word up there means because or for. And we can tell that it's the end of what that author wrote because he created that stylized design afterwards. We don't get this in the Bible, but... And then at the, after that, very much in keeping with the same printing and with the stylized design are the words according to Mark. So you can see kata is according, marken the Markin story. So that's the fragment. Generations of Christians have very much disliked the way Mark ended his gospel. So as years went by, scholars tacked on additional endings taken from other later versions of the, the Easter story and remember, there were many stories written at approximately the same time. They were all slightly different as the story had come down orally to that group of people. And this is common in scripture, by the way. There's nothing wrong with it. it wasn't a bad thing to add to scripture later or to revise something. It's just the way the Bible came to be. But in the earliest Gospel of Mark, we are considering today that after Jesus' death, in the garden, there was no interaction with Jesus, no encounter, no nothing, not even the end of a sentence. So I had Bill read the whole thing, but the earliest version would have ended with the word because. According to scholar Richard Burridge, the ending is very consistent with the rest of Mark's message. In Mark's gospel, even miracles do not produce the proper or a consistent understanding among Jesus' followers. So whether Jesus' life will bear fruit is a question throughout the gospel. And whether it comes out right in the end is still open. As I have reflected over the past several months, I am struck by the enormity of what is happening right now and what parts of humanity are enduring. The devastation in Palestine, of course, and so many other catastrophes. People, children, are witnessing and sustaining losses on a scale that we've barely begun to register, much less to grieve or deal with. We tremble in alarm. Those in danger try to flee, and we as global witnesses work hard not to flee, 
but to stay meaningfully engaged. And maybe that's why we need, need Mark's gospel this year. Because maybe we do need time, like the women at the tomb, to sit with the terror and the amazement. When our hope and belief and longing for justice, goodness and peace, collides with real time in broken bewilderment. Maybe we don't need to shout it out right away. Maybe it's just okay to be stunned and mute. This year I'm allowing myself to practice a slow entrance into Easter. Maybe it will take root within me imperceptibly, I hope so. The way seeds begin life unseen and then there's that one morning where we look at them and, and they've broken through the surface, small and fragile and green. It happens, but it's not certain there are some little seeds that don't grow. I believe there is life we cannot see, life hidden, tenacious, and dynamic and fragile, and it's not certain either. Even now, you and I are writing the end of the Palestine story. We are writing the next chapter of the climate crisis story. And I do not say that as a white, educated imperialist who has control over the world, just the opposite. I say it as a participant, as a person with a piece of chalk in my hand and only the power of community and my faith in a God who is good. On Friday, I talked to a friend who is recently widowed. She attended our joint Good Friday service at Meadowood United. And I asked how she was. Oh, she said, it's hard. Every day is hard. The service was hard, but it would have been just as hard if I had stayed at home. At least the service was in keeping with my sorrow. And that helps, she said. Sometimes, and we know this, when people are in pain, being around joy just makes it hurt worse. It's so jarring. It's so dissonant. It literally intensifies the pain that we are feeling and we feel isolated. At such moments, it's very good to be with others who know what it means to sorrow and who know how to be in the in-between place. The anonymous writer of Mark's gospel calls it the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. And if there was ever a clue that we, the readers and followers of Jesus, are meant to carry the story forward, well, this title has got to be that clue. And when we go out today, whether we follow or desert, or desert for a while and then come back, whether we love or fail to love, whether we meet Jesus in Galilee or decide that it was all one big mistake, well, it really depends on us because the sentence is ours to finish. Praise be to God. Amen.
Please be seated. Your contributions make the work and the ministry of Churchill Park possible and also furthers the work of missions and service in the larger world. If you like to make uh, your donation in person today, there is a box at the back of the sanctuary where you can do so. Let us pray. You, O oh God, are the Easter one. You are the source of resurrection and you are the dancing spirit of life. We offer our gifts in gratitude for hope returned, for the mystery of your grace, and for the promise of resurrection. Amen. Please remain seated as you sing the next song while I prepare the communion table. Shatters the night with his song, joy comes with the dawn. Please remain seated and join me in the communion liturgy. On this resurrection morning, fresh from the garden, Jesus invites us to come and dine with him. On this resurrection morning, still unsure of who he is. On this resurrection morning, even though we falter and run, Hallelujah and thanks to you, ever-living God. Out of chaos and fear, you bring beauty and hope. Out of despair and death, you birth courage and new life. By the power of resurrection, we join the song of a new day.
My heart is glad to say the words You are holy God On the night before he died, Jesus sat down with his disciples. He gave thanks to God, and then he took the bread and broke it and passed it around for all to eat, saying, This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had supped and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Each time you drink from this cup, remember me. Through this bread and, through this bread and cup, Jesus lives within us. In word and deed, Jesus lives among us. Remembering God's boundless love for us, we proclaim the mystery of our faith in song. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come, come again. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come, come again. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come, come again. Send now, O God, your Spirit upon these gifts, that all who share in them may be light and life in the world. Amen. Merciful and loving God, we come into your presence today, hoping in some way to touch you, to see for ourselves the truth of resurrection. Gather up our fears and confusion, meet our doubt with compassion and understanding, open our eyes to your love and grace, open our ears to the world that is calling us with its challenges. Open our imaginations to new possibilities. Come anew to all. Come anew. Come. And hear us as we pray. Our Mother, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. In the breaking of bread, we remember those who have no bread to break. All those without shelter, all those who are burdened with loneliness and fear, and we pray for the day when all people find on this earth a generous home. The bread of life broken for you, the cup of salvation poured out for you. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Would the servers, Bill and Susan and Joanne, please come forward. Great. And if someone needs gluten-free, you'll stand right beside
Let us pray. Life giver God, may we who share this meal today live a risen life, bring new life to others, and be Christ's lights in the world. Amen. Never-ending joy, never-ending joy, never-ending joy, never-ending joy, never-ending joy, Why do you linger? You have seen and so you are already blessed. You have been seen and so you have become the blessing. There is no word you need. There is simply this, go and love. There is simply to begin. In joy and hope, we go from this place. Amen. Amen.